Welcome back to the Witcher Math channel on YouTube. Hey, and to part three of this series. Okay, here's where the rubber hits the highway. We get a chance to practice what happened in the first two videos, which was essentially uh, teaching you about how to change your standard formula for the volume of a cylinder into a formula for radius or height or anything else you need. Okay, this is an eighth grade common core standard for geometry. That talks about knowing the formulas, but then using them to solve problems. We're focusing on cylinders here. In uh, future videos, we'll deal with cones and spheres, which is always fun to say. Um, okay. Go ahead and hit the pause bar, hit the space bar, the pause button, whatever, and uh, copy the problem down. And then when you come back, we're going to solve this one. Go. All right, here we are. Got a couple of choices. As you've learned, if, if this doesn't uh, ring a bell to you, maybe you missed the first uh, video or two. But we can solve this problem for R. We could solve for R first, then substitute numbers in and get our answer. Another way we can solve this is we can substitute all the numbers in first and then solve for R. Either way, we'll get the same answer. Here we go. We'll try to make this short and sweet, but still give you the level of detail we need. Okay, there's your standard uh, formula for volume of cylinder. Pi times the radius squared. That's a 2. Yep. Times the height. We're going to isolate the R by using the giant 1 method here. We're dividing out the uh, coefficients, if you will the radius. Okay, there's a 1, there's a 1. I'm just switching these around because I always like the isolated variable on the left. You might have your own preferences. Now we have the radius squared equals the volume divided by pi times the height. Important step, take the root of both sides. That isolates the radius and gives us kind of this ugly or pretty, depending on how you look at things formula over here. Now we're going to substitute the numbers that we were given and find the answer. Okay, showing all the steps for your benefit, but also for mine, it's a good way to catch a mistake if you happen to have one. Common estimate for pi we typically would use in a problem like this, 3.14. It gives us a way of punching the numbers into the calculator. Don't use the pi button, it just gives you an answer that has pi in it, unless that's what you want. Okay, and our height, which was given here, was that. 1105. Speaking of calculators, I'm going to use mine now. There we go. Scoot that up there. We're going to divide what's inside of the root symbol, the radical sign, if you will. 15.99, dot, 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 so I'm going to round that off. 16. And then we can see that the radius is 4. Okay. You can always do a proof, too. I won't do this for all the problems, but in case you're wondering, hey, is my answer right? Well, don't wait around for the teacher to score it. Go ahead and uh, substitute the numbers back into our original volume equation, including your answer. And, you know, there's rounding and stuff going on here. But if it's super close, then you know you got it. So 3.14 times 16 times 22. like this. Even though those aren't precisely accurate, that's due to rounding that happened on the calculator. We're going to call that true, and that way you know you have the right answer. So you don't have to wait around for it to get scored. Okay? Now let's go over here and use the other method on this, which is we're going to take that equation. We're going to put the numbers in first. So I'm going to put the 1105 in. 
the common estimate of pi, there's what I'm solving for, and the height. Okay, then I'm going to divide by that. Now hopefully you recognize here at this point we could have uh, multiplied pi times 22 and simply divided by 69 and 8 hundredths here. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have radius squared equals, just because I know, because we already did the math. Okay, then we're going to drop it down here. And you'll remember from before, if I divide these two things, I get about 16. Now I'm going to take the root of both sides, and we see the radius is 4. See? We solved it two different ways. Got the same answer. We already did the proof, so I'm not going to do that again. All right, let's try that again. Repetition. Here we go. Where's problem two? There's problem two. You know the routine. Hit the space bar, copy the problem down. I'll see you in just a moment. Oh, hey, you're back. Welcome back. Let's do this problem. We're going to do it both ways, okay? So, I've got, uh, and believe it or not, just the act of writing this down really helps you memorize it. You don't have to do flashcards if you're doing practice problems and you make sure you write the formula before you start solving. You might find that you have it memorized without even having to memorize it. How's that sound? Um, first, I'm going to isolate the H. So I'm going to divide both sides by what's effectively the coefficient of H here. That's a 2. Okay, there's a giant 1 happening. Woohoo, giant 1 means bye bye. The height is the volume divided by pi times the radius squared. Let's go ahead and substitute the values that were given. I've got a volume of 3184. We can use the common estimate of pi, 3 and 14 hundredths. We're going to use the uh, radius squared. You remember your 13s, right, from second grade? I'm joking, I'm joking. That was third grade. That's 169. I don't remember my 169s, though, so I'm going to go ahead and calculator this one 3184 over 530 and about two-thirds I go ahead and divide that 3184 and I get basically six here I'm not gonna waste more video time did I say waste? Whew, I didn't mean that. I'm not going to spend more video time uh, doing a proof, but you definitely should. Once you get that answer, take the answer and all the numbers you're given, plug them back into that original equation, and make sure it's right, okay? Don't wait for it to be scored. Score it yourself. Um, of course, the other method we've been working on here is let's go ahead and substitute, then solve, okay? So we're going to leave all the letters where they are, all the variables, and start substituting things. Right? Do some calculations here, showing each step of the way. Okay, I already know that side of the deal, because we did that calculation already on the other effort. Okay, I'm going to divide both sides by the coefficient of h, which in this case is 530, and some change. And hopefully you recognize, at this point, it kind of works out the same way. In fact, hopefully you're noticing that if we choose to substitute, even though things are out of order and all that, if you substitute and then solve, this is a little bit shorter process than solving for our desired variable. 
first. But, you know, it's one extra step, so whichever one works best for you is the one you should do. And finally, we have one more problem here, and then we'll be done with this practice. Okay, I've got a volume of 20,771 cubic centimeters and a height of 15. Solve for D. Find the diameter. Hit the space bar, and then we'll do this one, and then I will see you later. All right, welcome back. Don't worry, you can uh, take a break and get a drink of water. Go, in fact, go ahead. Okay, nice. Last one, I promise. We like threes, right? Three little pigs, three bears, you know, three blind mice. First, I'm going to uh, isolate the D. What? There is no D in here. Oh, well. But there's an R, and we know R and D are related. It takes two radi radii to make a diameter. So we're going to solve for that first, and then we'll do a times two. Okay? I'm just basically reviewing the algebra here. Okay, when you take the root of a square, you're left with, well, the root. Ha! Huh? But more importantly here, we've got an equation to find the radius. But since radius, we need two of them to find the diameter. That's like saying times 2. That's an invisible step, saying times 2. And we're going to do times 2 on both sides, right? Now it's not an invisible step. So if that's the equation for radius, this is the equation for the diameter, times 2 on both sides. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this. I'm running out of space. I hope this can happen. We're going to make this happen. Diameter equals 2 times the square root of this volume we were given over the common estimate for pi times the height for this problem. Let's figure that out. It's going to be in the upper 40s, just like today's high more in the world. Okay. It means 2 times the square root of 20,771 divided by 47 and 1 tenth. I'm going to round that off and call it 441. And at this point, you probably see that I came up with a nice pretty answer here. Square root of 441 is 21, which means the diameter for this problem is 42, but if you would rather do it a slightly shorter way, let's do that. We start with our equation. Don't worry, this is the last one. If you're still here, whew, I'm going to throw you a virtual Jolly Rancher when this is over. Okay, we're going to just do our substituting first. Remember, this was the other technique, was just plug the numbers in and then isolate the variable. and the height is 15. So if I divide both sides by this number, that effectively uh, creates a giant one situation there. And what it does is it gives me the radius squared equals 441, which means if I take the square root of both sides, I get the radius equals 21, and then if I multiply both sides by 2, 2 times r equals diameter. That's like magic there, isn't it? Poof! It turns into a d. That's crazy. We get the same answer. Diameter is 42. Hopefully you got that. And uh, thanks for sticking it out and hopefully learning a new skill that could be valuable for you in lots of other classes. All right, thanks for watching Witcher Math, and uh, I'll see you again sometime soon, I hope. Thank you. Volume.